Greetings to all. Welcome to Future of Zeus Academy. Today, we are going to see the daily current affairs of 4th May. Today, what are all the topics we are going to cover? Are? The first topic is freedom of press. The second is India-Indonesia relationships. And the third is swell waves. Now, we'll move on to the topic. Our first topic is freedom of press. Why it is currently in news? Reporters Without Borders, Global Press Freedom Index, according to the report, India's ranking dropped from 36.62 to 31.28. It has been dropped. India moved up to 159 in 2024 from 161 in 2023. This is the result of other nations falling in importance. It addresses five areas. What are all those are? The five areas is first one is political context. The second one legal framework. Third economic context and fourth social cultural context like this it has deals about four areas now we can see about the security scene in this freedom of press a fundamental right, freedom of the press, ensures that people and institutions, including media outlets and journals, can publish and distribute information without worrying about censorship or reprisal. It is the lack of legislative and administrative restrictions on the expression of concepts, information and ideas. In actuality, press freedom refers to the freedom of people to report on events and topics of public interest as well as to voice their opinions and ideas through a variety of media including print broadcast and online platform the freedom to obtain information and to hold individuals in positions of authority responsible for their deeds are also included in this right now, we have to know about the constitutional recognition. Press freedom is acknowledged as a fundamental human right by international organizations like United Nations. And it is protected by the constitution of many nations. Although the Indian constitution does not specifically mention press freedom, it is thought to be a part of more general freedom of speech and expression. It is protected by Article 19, Class 1, Subclass A of the document. Also, the media is entitled to the freedom of speech and expression as well as the ability to disseminate information. This covers the freedom to do interviews, cover legal procedures, run ads and obtain information. Now, do we have constitutional recognition for this freedom acts? We have some of the restrictions also. These restrictions come under Article 19, subclass 2 of the Constitution. What are those restrictions? Sovereignty and integrity of India, security of the state, friendly relationships with foreign states, public order, decency, morality, also contempt of court, defamation and the incitement to an offence. These limitations are required to make sure that press freedom is not abused and endangers national security. In addition to expressing their independence, the media must uphold moral norms and values such as refraining and sensorization, slander and inciting violence. We know that media is one of the fourth pillar of a democracy. How it is? 
the judicial, legislative and executive branches of government are regarded as the first three pillars of the democracy in India. With that, media coming in fourth. Holding power accountable. It Media holds and power accountable. How? As a watchdog, the media monitors the activities of politicians, the government and other influential groups. Also, it looks into the document topics of public interest, exposes wrongdoing and corruption and holds the powerful accountable for their deeds. Next is informing the public. How the public can learn about topics pertaining to politics, government and other facts of public life from the media. For citizens to engage in democracy, make educated decisions and hold those in positions of authority responsible, they need to know this information. And media is also an advocating for public interest, also it providing a platform of design in a way of people can voice opposing viewpoints, opinions and ideas through the media in a democracy where the right to free speech is inalienable. This is vital. By enabling a variety of voices be heard, the media promotes free speech. Also, it gives strengthening a nation. This is a fundamental to a democratic society and also awareness and good governance. Current status of press India is press freedom in India is widely regarded as vibrant and unrestricted. Nonetheless, worries regarding India's declining press freedom have surfaced recently. Among the crucial concerns which are, are journalist intimidation and harassment and legal challenges, government control, internet shutdowns, lack of media literacy, misuse of social media, pressure from political parties and business interests, lack of regulation, all those things we see as the concerns of this media. And we have some cases regarding to this such as Romesh Topa versus State of Madras case, Sakal Papers Limited versus Union of Indian case, then Bennett Colon and Kobe Union of India case. Like this, we have many cases regarding to India. Sorry, freedom of press in India. This is all about this freedom of press. The next topic of us is India Indonesia relations. Why it is currently in news? In New Delhi, the seventh meeting. The seventh meeting was India Indonesia's Joint Defense Cooperation Committee have been held. Both parties decided during the meeting to strengthen their cooperation in fields of multilateral cooperation, maritime security. and defense industry. Now, what are the commercial relationships between India and Indonesia are? From Indian coast, followers of the Hindu, Buddhist and later Muslim faith migrated to Indonesia. Theatres and folk art from Indonesia are influenced by the tales found in the great epics of Ramayana and Mahabharata. About 100,000 Indonesians are of Indian descent. The majority of them are found in Greater Jakarta, Maiden, Surabaya and Bandan. A memorandum of understanding was signed by Reserve Bank of India and Bank of Indonesia to create a framework that encourages the use of local currencies. The Indonesian rupee and the Indian rupee for cross-border transactions. Now, 
what is that MOU between RBI and Indonesia have been done? It is the main goal of the MOU is to make bilateral transactions in INR and Indian rupee easier. This includes all current accounts transactions that are allowed on the capital account and other financial and economic transactions that both countries have mutual agreed upon. The framework promotes the growth of an INR, an ideal foreign exchange market, by allowing exporters and importers to invoice and pay their respective domestic currencies. This method optimizes transaction costs and settlement times. It is anticipated to strengthen financial integration, advance trade, and improve historical, culture, and economic ties between India and Indonesia. What are the political relations between India and Indonesia are? Leading proponents of Asian and African nationalism, these nations facilitated the Bandan Conference and the establishment of non-aligned movement. Bilateral relations have rapidly developed since India adopted the Look East policy in 1991. Both nations are members of the UN, the East Asia Summit and the G20. These are some of the political relations. Now we will move on to the next topic that is swell waves. While the swell waves are in news, the coastal states received a warning about the possibility of high energy waves from the Indian National Center for Ocean Information Service. Now, what is this Indian National Center Ocean Information Service? The Ministry of Earth Science oversees INCOIS, an independent organization. It was founded in in the year 1999 based in Hyderabad. It is the division of the New Delhi based Earth System Science Organization. It is the mission continuously monitor the ocean and make improvements through methodological targeted research in order to give society, industry, government agencies and the scientific community the best possible ocean information and advisory service. Now here what the Earth System Science Organization means. Regarding its policies and initiatives, the Earth System Science Organization functions as the Ministry of Earth Science to as executive branch. It aims to enhance and expand capacity to predict weather climate and hazard related phenomena for the benefits of society, economy and the environment. This includes tackling issues with climate change science and climate services. Additionally, it is the charge of an advancement of technology related to the discovery and use of marine resources. It has four major branches of earth science. What are those four branches? Ocean science and technology, atmospheric and climate science, geoscience and Technology, polar science, and cryosphere. Now, what is this? Swell waves.
The swell waves along India east and west coast result in several flooding events without any warning in the local winds. Because of the sudden flooding along the coast, fishermen frequently lose their boats and fishing gear as a result of this phenomenon. To find out more about them, we can use this swell waves. Surface gravity waves on the ocean that are no longer rowing or being supported by the wind are known as swell waves. Unlike a wind in a sea, these waves are generated by the wind some distance away and are now freely propagating across the ocean away from their area of generation. They can propagate in directions that are different from the direction of wind. Flash floods known as color cuddle or swell surges occur when there is no obvious warning signs or shifts in wind patterns in the sea. And now we have to see about how the formation of swell waves happen. It has various formations such as it has generation, growth, propagation and swell. The generation says that wind waves which are produced when the wind blows over the ocean surface are the precursors of swells. Waves are produced by wind energy flowing into the water. Now the growth says about if the wind blows consistently for a long enough amount of time and over a large enough distance, these waves can get bigger. Propagation says that the waves begin to group together into a set of softer, more consistent waves as soon as they leave the region that is being affected by wind that is creating them. Waves are sorted by wavelength and speed through the process of dispersion with longer waves traveling farther and faster than shorter ones. Now, what are the characteristics of the swell waves? It has long wavelengths, high speed, smooth appearance, energy. These are the some of the characteristics of swell waves. Now, what are the impacts of swell waves seen? The impacts are surfing, coastal erosion. These are the impacts. The surfing is because of the swells produce the large consistent waves the surfers want. They are essential to surfing. The futures of incoming swells like size, period and direction greatly affect the quality of surf breaks. Now what is this coastal erosion says is coastal erosion can be caused by swell waves particularly during the storms when their energy is increased. These are all about the swell waves. That's all from our today's topic. To get this PDF download you can get from our telegram channel. The telegram channel link will be provided in our description. To get more daily current affairs videos follow our YouTube channel and our telegram channel for daily current affairs MCQs. Thank you.